Hello everyone, welcome to Hexen. I'm going to jump straight in with a new game with random with the hardest level of difficulty. Wow. Uh, apparently the cleric, which is, in my opinion, the hardest character to play because it, early on with just this mace, doesn't do very much damage, but nevertheless has to get in close to these uh, Ettins here, which, you know, is, is not ideal because, well, not just Ettins, but everything. Now, I've had a couple of run-throughs to test it out, basically, check it's working, which it is. Um, and what I've discovered, which I didn't realise from having played it as a kid, is that the character class that you play as determines what enemies show up. Like, I played as a mage, which has a ranged weapon to begin with, and, um, and I got Afrits. You know, flying enemies early on in that very first um, anti-chamber storm. Now, I really... It's been a long time since I played Hexen, but I i think it's one of the sort of the defining games of the genre. It, it not... Obviously, it looks very much like Doom and Heretic and, you know, similar games, but with Raven Software, I don't know if it were involved in Heretic, rather, I don't know if Raven were involved in Heretic, but with um, with Raven Software involved in this game, they added a lot of features that you don't get in the Doom engine without really overcomplicating the engine, which is a very, uh, a very magical feat indeed. Because, you know, the, the Hexen engine is very similar to the Doom engine and the Heretic engine. Indeed, the Heretic engine is exactly the Doom engine. They didn't upgrade it in any way to make Heretic. All they did was make new textures and all that sort of thing. New enemies, new weapons, and the new between-act um, storylines. But Hexen was somewhat a, a departure from the norm. And it's, it represents a time when people were starting to use games as a, you know, an art form almost, a, a narrative format. You know, they, they were trying to tell at least some sort of story with this game. They were trying to tell a story with Doom, they were trying to tell a story with Heretic, you could argue. But what they were really trying to do was give you the opportunity to beat the shit out of a shitload of things with cool guns. Right? There was a story to Heretic. It was... Shadow of the Serpent Riders and all that. There was the Sparrow Road Serpent and there was an antagonist and there was a protagonist. But mostly it was running around shooting things to try and find the secret rooms, right? It was at a time when the story of a game was just a feeble excuse to make the game. You know, you could, do you remember ever reading the story books or the instruction books that came with a Game Boy game? Which used to be my favourite thing to do. You know, you come home your parents will take you to Toys R Us or something, or whatever you have in your part of the world. Um, and you'd come home and you'd have your Game Boy game, but you didn't have your Game Boy with you because your parents wouldn't let you bring it in case you lost it or broke it, because you can't be trusted because you're only, you know, 10 years old. And you have your Game Boy game and the story book, well the book contains a story and the instructions, which is something unheard of these days. So kids these days don't know what they're missing, am I right? Um, but the, there was a lot more sort of liberty in the packaging of games because the packaging of games was the only opportunity they had to really get the artwork that they wanted in the game, in the game. You know, if, well, hello. This is the thing that Heretic, that Hexen does that no game before it did. Enemies will just randomly spawn. There are spawn points set up for them which I only know because I, I've, you know, played with the editing software. There are spawn points set up for the enemies and they will randomly spawn in. Not very often, admittedly, but it does mean that when you're coming back from beating stuff up, you can't just complacently run around like nothing has happened. And it's kind of a, a nice departure from what Rorax calls monster closets. Stop hitting me. It's not fair. Um, where, you know, you're walking around and all of a sudden it opens. Ah! Uh, and then there's a bunch of enemies in it and the enemies come out. So, yeah, there's, there's a few cool things that Hexen did. One of which 
is to extend the Doom engine to allow for things to move sideways. Or to rotate, which is essentially a, a form of moving sideways, right? So those doors that we opened up when we first walked in, they opened, they rotated open. They hinged open. Never before seen, as far as I know. Don't forget this was based on the Doom engine, which had no such thing. Um, the the Doom, the Hex, and the Heretic engines, these are what we call 2.5D uh, engines. Similar to Smash Bros, in fact. Smash Bros is another 2.5D game. But the reason it's 2.5D is that the contents of the level, the, the data for the level, is two-dimensional. But it's rendered in three dimensions, if that makes sense. And I'll show you what I mean. If you have a look at the map, you can see that all parts of the map are separate. They're just squares on a well. They're, they're lines, you know, that, that define the shapes. Every shape is easily defined with a line on the map, and every surface is vertical. Yeah, every single surface in this game is vertical, but you wouldn't necessarily notice because you know you, you've got some pretty swanky level designers going into all this. So it's not it's ain't your grandma's level designs. Uh, so. Yeah, they've put some decent amount of effort into it, is what I'm saying. But everything's vertical, which means that to make the map, all you need is a two-dimensional editor. You literally, you draw the map, and you create what we call sectors, which is any shape contained by lines, so this whole area we're in is a sector. And you set the height of it, and the height of the floor, and the height of the ceiling, and then the sky's a special. Right? Every single thing that you look at is the height of the floor and the height of the ceiling, and if you observe as we go around you'll see that every single thing has a horizontal floor and a horizontal ceiling and vertical walls. The way to do that is just to run through it as soon as it starts. Um, which was the the games in those days and you, you'll see that in both Hex and, sorry, in both Heretic and in Doom and you know subsequent things like Doom 2, etc. Everything that uses the same engine, all doors will open vertically. Even in Heretic, where it doesn't really make too much sense to do that. Uh, because in Heretic, it's all it's doors like that, which you would expect to hinge open. But that's expensive. Consider the technology that you had in, in the 90s. You couldn't necessarily actually fit the, the data required to open the door um, like on a hinge too many times in memory it was much easier to have one rule for everything because you'll notice that not only do doors open vertically but you know passageways open from the ground up or from the you know the passageway might open uh, as a one really long door or maybe the floor will drop but that just makes it a really long lift right everything is either a door or a lift in Hexen and Doom, but why is that? Oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, in Hexen they added the ability for things to slide and rotate, which is. Greetings, mortal. Are you ready to die? I am. Bring it on. I... The the ability for things to slide is a superb sort of. It's not so much of a technological advancement because the technology. It was already there. We had sliding walls in um, Wolfenstein, for goodness sake. Wolfenstein 3. Oh, hello. Didn't expect you there. But to, to have sort of ported it into the Doom engine is no mean feat. And the other thing that Hexen did, that all the other games did before, but was to not have those... You remember in Doom there was episodes 1, 2, and 3. And uh, same in Heretic, you know, you finish one episode, you start the next one, basically completely afresh, without any, any, you didn't have any items, you didn't start with any of the weapons that you collected or anything like that. Now, Heretic admittedly did add items to the game, the uh, idea of an inventory, you could collect items and uh, use them later, but the items themselves are kind of shit. Although everyone's favourite quartz flask was available then, as it is in Hex now. I'll deal with you later. There's plenty of HP considering we're on the hardest mode. But the other thing it did was to separate it out from these um, from these episodic sort of sections of the game, which certainly helped with. 
distributing a shareware version, that's for sure. Um, it, it separated out these episodes and turned them into... Pardon me, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be down. Uh, these hubs. It's the first time that I've ever seen a hub world in a game, and I don't know if it was the really the first game that did it, but it's certainly the first game that popularised it. What you see is that in... Oh, God. How do I deal with this bullshit? This would have been really, really difficult back in the day, don't forget, because this was from a time when people assumed that you would turn with the arrow keys and, you know, you hit you. Uh, and you wouldn't be strafing at all. You'd use alt to change the arrow key to be a strafe. Let's see if we can get our uh, quartz flask here. Q. How do I use my quartz flask? R, F, G. No? Oh, shit. Where the fuck did you come from? See that shit? Scalded by a serpent. I, I'll... <laughs> Options. Controls? Customize controls. There we go. Use item. Jump. Crouch? Use? No. Use open is zero. I don't think it's that. Very loud, I apologize. Inventory. D pad down. Q, mate. Q. There we go. So no wonder I couldn't figure it out. There wasn't one. Are you ready to die? So we're on our uh, poison cloud flechette, which is uh, new to Hexen. By the way, the reason I'm talking about Heretic so much is that uh, I watched Rorax's uh, playthrough of Heretic and I really enjoyed it. It definitely sent me right back to the good old days when that's how games were. You know, and Roax apparently knows all the secrets and I don't. So I, I'm going to try and maybe get all the secrets in this playthrough of this, but honestly I don't think I know them. I really don't like the fighter, the, the cleric right now, because the amount of hits it's taken to do any damage to these motherfuckers is... It's doing my not in, mate. It's stressing me right out. So hopefully we get a decent weapon soon. And we will be, in theory. There is a, a weapon coming up. We start getting mana soon. Anyway, I was talking about these hubs. Because Hexen... Doom itself didn't have any scripts. It did not have a scripting language. Everything was done... Sort of as part of the game. Every single function that the game could do was built in. Which, you know, it, it's kind of a difficult thing to to explain if you don't already have a grasp of it. Oh, shit. It leaves it behind and then immediately explodes. That is not funny. All right, let's get some uh, HP out. But, oi, get out of here. Run. Um, Hexen has scripts and Hexen has hubs. And I kinda, it's kind of like a case of one, one begets the other. These hub worlds that we're in, how the fuck are you supposed to get close enough to this to hit it, huh? Imagine this with the keyboard and mouse, as I was saying. And and uh, stuff you do in one level will affect the other level. So, man, there's got to be more flechettes around here. I've seen them. Here we go. So we should probably put these to good use. Try and... Do some damage to that jabroni over there. Um, so that's the way the, the whole game was structured was that there's these central levels like this. And you have to do things in the satellite levels in order to progress through these levels. And then... I hate this. <laughs> and then that will... Eventually you, you leave the hub world. And, and move on to the next hub. Which is... Not very common. I mean... Nowadays, it's almost assumed that you'll be revisiting. Holy shit. I forgot about you guys. It's almost assumed these days that you'll be revisiting a, a level that you've been to. Yeah, Every single game now uses the same, almost a trope of level design where... What are all those explosions? <laughs> um, no, fuck. Every... Every level is going to have something that's blocked off that you can't access right now. Let's use the quartz flask. It's 25 HP, which is pretty decent. Mace of Contrition. Yeah, Mace of Bullshit, more like. More flechettes, though. 
Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Um, Hexen was also the first game where you could jump. I'm talking about the id games here, so... You know, it's, oh, there we go. Um, it's the, the Raven Software ID id series of games, but... That was interesting. Now we're going... So, this is a satellite world. And obviously, as modern game players, we are completely used to... Okay, this. There we go. The idea that we're going to be coming back to that level, but at the time, we had no concept of it. And in fact, I, I have a strong feeling that a large quantity of the satellite levels are actually joined together. But you don't learn that until later, so I'm not going to tell you. So there you go. You can see in the old days, moving up and down was essentially trivial. Um, whereas moving back and forth was impossible until Hexa came. Uh, and, and this is sort of a earth, air, fire and water type of four elements starting hub. So it's going to be... So it's not really earth, air, fire and water, it's fire, ice, steel and fuck knows what else. You're going to come up here, you bullshit AI users. There we go. Yeah, come on then. Obviously in the um, in original Hexen you won't be able to look down with quite so much modern perspective as we used to. It, having been a 2.5D game, all horizontal surfaces were permanently rendered horizontally and all vertical surfaces were permanently rendered vertically. The only difference between them was in the angle that you were in the world. So when you look down, what would actually happen is they'd do something called shearing where they'd just take the area that you could look at and literally move it upwards um, in order to give the impression that you'd, you know, gone vertically, looked vertically on the thing. So I've got an amulet of warding, which I believe is just armour. I think the 154 over 200 in our bottom right corner there is our magical armor, and then the other one is our physical armor, or something like that. So here's a, a you know, hex and scripting, as I was saying, in Doom, you could only do one thing at a time, right? You could move to ground, move to ceiling, move to not quite the ceiling, like that. Um, you could open door quick, open door slow. That was it. You know, there was a limited number of things that you could ever do in Doom with the floors and ceilings. One of the coolest things which was actually uh, built in was to create stairs. And of course they were they were um, parameterized, so you could say create stairs of certain height. Could you? It might have just been that in Doom it would create stairs that fitted. So you had to actually create the levels such that the functions available to you would work without crashing, which was quite interesting when I was originally making maps for this game. Well, for that game. I heard you. But in Hexen we have scripts. Now the scripts can work between levels or within levels, so that um, small piece of script we saw earlier, when the pillars went up and down and did the up and downy thing and then pointed at one, that's different every time. The, there's a script which uses random, a random number, quite simply, to determine which one should remain open. It uses random speeds to make them go up and down in a random fashion. And then they all finish opening and then one of them is being randomly pointed at. And it turns the... Alright, let's get inside baseball. There are line defs, line definitions, sector definitions, and side definitions, right? talking about the uh, the actual literal mechanics of the game engine right now. I'm not a fan of this, so I'm going to run away. <laughs> Usually when things go dark and shit goes down, you want to run away. Uh, I want to use that. I don't have a button to easily switch active item right now. You're going to fucking come out here or what, you Jesus bastard. Where are you? So the line defs are every line on the map. The sectors are the things that the map's enclosed, but every line has one or two sides. The dark lines have one side, and the light lines have two sides. And you can step through anything that has two sides, because it's a sector on both sides. That's basically it. There is somewhere to be on this side, and there's somewhere to be on that side. 
and you need a texture wherever one sector is lower or higher than the other. So there's a texture there because this sector is lower than that sector. There's a texture there because that ceiling is higher than this ceiling and that's the whole of it. That's the entirety of the game engine is that. But what you couldn't do in a game like Doom was to have something impassable, like you couldn't have a line that you couldn't cross, like this line here, and then change it so that you could. You could also have some lines, if you cross them, they would teleport you to a specific place in the map. Oh shit. This ain't gonna be fun. Luckily these things are fairly weak. Afrits, they're called. Um, when you cross a line in Doom, if you see a teleporter, then you're gonna cross the line and get teleported to a place, right? That's basically how teleporters work. And, you know, you could parameterize that, it would never work. But it was always a teleporter. If ever you cross that line, or if anything crosses that line, it would teleport you. But Hexen allows you to mutate these things to such a great extent. Which is how that um, random thing worked, by the way. When it finished, it picks one of them, set all of its sides to teleporting sides. Uh, and then all the other ones it set to crushers. And uh, not Wesley crushers. So if you stepped on the wrong one, that made a hiss sound, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> if you step on the wrong one, it squishes you. All those uh, fire balls that, like when those things rotated, first of all, no one's ever seen anything rotate in one of these games before. And then they started shooting fireballs at random angles, at semi-random intervals. And the scripting language is a bit like C, so it's actually the first code that I ever wrote. Oh, that's our mana down there. Look, red, uh, green and blue mana. So where's our armor? I don't know. Guardian of Fire. Yeah, so it's uh, it's like different guardians. I guess we want to go down there at some point, but there's probably a switch. Let's get this. One third of the puzzle has been solved. That is another situation. You pull that in Doom and Hexa in Heretic, you only got two positions for switches. You need the fire key. Well, one third of the puzzle has been solved. Now what do we do? In this game, what you're trying to do is find three of those throughout the entirety of all the levels. I want to go in there, don't I? Do I? It looks scary. Oh, this opens. Right, cool. Oh, this place. Want to talk about more scripting? How about this fucking earthquake shit going on right here? That was a cool script. I should save it. Fudge. <laughs> That's what always run does for you. Alright, let's do this again. Ah, oh, fucking bring it on. Use a flask. Quartz flask is 25. So that's more than enough. Just keep this going. So we can pick up some of the HP that's in this room. I hate this. Why can't we get a ranged weapon, for goodness sake? Or at least one that actually does damage to enemies. It's like when you're in Isaac and you've got shit range and shit, shit shot speed and you uh, fire rate and you've got shit fucking damage as well. And you're like, God, every enemy takes so long to die that I'm taking damage from them because I'm jaded and there's nowhere to go, you know? They start taking up all the space and you start running out of room to manoeuvre, basically. Have you noticed, by the way, these are blue glows. That was never in the original game. That's OpenGL. Uh, well, it's not necessarily OpenGL specifically, but it's the uh, upgrades we get as a result of having an OpenGL capable renderer. Is that we actually get point light locations, which is really cool. I mean, in the original Hexen, like in Doom and Heretic, every light level is just set for the whole sector. Which means all lighting effects are actually sectors themselves. So you see how those lights are coming out of those torches? Those are actually separate, but they're not on the map because you can you know, fix it so that doesn't happen. 
I'm going to pull this switch. And then I'm going to say I'm going to leave it there. So thank you for watching. Uh, we'll continue this in the next episode, which I hope you're looking forward to. I have waffled on a little bit, but I will continue to waffle on in the next episode. So I'll see you then.